Okay, now what I'd like to do in the precious time that we have left, is deal with a very important part of giraffe, because I wouldn't want you to get the idea that uh, nonviolent communication is solely interested in conflict resolution, because it's equally interested in celebration. How can we celebrate life? In fact, the part that I've left for 10 minutes before the end is uh, in some respects the most important part because it's where we get the fuel to stay giraffe in a, what's often a very jackalish world. So it's going to be pretty hard to make this radical transformation into back to our nature in many situations unless we're getting plenty of fuel. Now, where does the fuel come from? The fuel comes from celebration. And what kind of celebration? It comes from saying thank you in giraffe. So let's see now in the last minutes how we celebrate by saying thank you in giraffe, expressing gratitude in giraffe. And first I'd like to remind you of how jackals, jackals say thank you. You did a good job on that paper. You are a very kind person. You're a good dancer. Can you see why that's jackal? Moralistic judgment. Positive moralistic judgments are equally as violent in my estimation as negative ones. Namely, they reinforce the idea that the negative exists. If I say you're a kind person, I'm implying there's such a thing as an unkind person. I'm also implying that I'm the judge that knows the difference. So no more praise or compliment. No more praise or compliment. Especially when you intend them as a reward. That's the ultimate dehumanization, to use thank you as a reward. To say it for the purpose of trying to reinforce something, to get the person to continue doing it. It's like sending a, you know, what, what goes on at dog obedience school? Punishment and reward. So giving a compliment or praise for the purpose of reinforcement is giving the dog uh, something to eat to reinforce it for something. Well, people are not for that treatment. And it destroys the beauty of thank you. When people have to wonder, is this being said out of that energy? But it works. What does Jackal? Studies in management indicate that if Managers praise and compliment employees daily, production goes up. Studies in school show that if teachers praise and compliment students daily, they work harder. Jack will take another look at the research. I think you'll see that that only works for a very short time until people see the manipulation. And then it no longer works. And it destroys the beauty of thank you, because now you cannot even trust gratitude without wondering whether it's being used as a reinforcement, as a reward. Well, what about if I want to build up the other person's self-esteem? What's wrong with that? So, you, Jackal, you don't see the irony of that? What? If the other person can only like themselves when you compliment them, they have no self-esteem. You've just addicted them to your reward that they only feel good when you say something about them. They have no self-esteem. Okay. How does a giraffe say thank you? Or gratitude? First, there's three things that are involved in a giraffe expression of gratitude that give us energy to keep being a giraffe. The first thing in a giraffe expression of gratitude is we bring to this other person's attention concretely what they have done that has made life more wonderful for us. See, that's what we need to do daily. We need to bring our consciousness and attention to the power that each one of us has to make life more wonderful. Each of us is a powerhouse. We have words that have the power to contribute to making people's lives more wonderful. We have touch. We can touch people in ways that can make life more wonderful. We can provide services for people. We are powerhouses. The more we remember this, 
We'll not get caught up in any violent game. Why would we use our energy any way other than to make life wonderful when we remember that we have this power? So that's one thing we got to make clear in our expression of gratitude. Specifically what the person did, not some vague generality. For example, a woman in Geneva, Switzerland came up to me at the end of a workshop. Here's what she said to me. You're brilliant. I said, it doesn't help. She said, what do you mean? I said, you know, ma'am, I have been called a lot of names in my life. Really, I have. Some positive and some far less than positive. And I can never recall learning anything valuable by somebody telling me what I am. I think there's zero information value in being told what you are. And great danger, you might believe it. And it's just, it's just as dangerous to believe that you're smart as that you're stupid. Both of them reduce you to a thing. We're much more than either of those. But I can see in your eyes that you want to uh, express some gratitude. Yes, and I want to receive it, but it doesn't help me to be told what I am. Well, what do you need to hear? What did I do to make life more wonderful for you? Well, well you're so intelligent. No, it doesn't, doesn't help. What did I do? Oh, I got you, I got you. She opens up her notebook. She showed me two things that I had said that she had written down. She put a big star by them. That helps me now. Okay. That helps me to know that somehow my saying those two things made this person's life more wonderful. So that's the first thing we need to say in appreciation. We need to bring to the person's attention concretely what they did that made life more wonderful. Second, at the moment we're giving the gratitude to say how we feel at that moment about the person having done that. So I said to this woman, could you tell me how you feel now as a result of my having said those two things? She said, hopeful and relieved. Oh, hopeful and relieved. That gives me much more than telling me what I am, that I'm brilliant. Just to know that somehow my saying those two things, now this person feels hopeful and relieved. Now when I hear the third thing, I'll be able to really enjoy this gratitude. I said, what need of yours was fulfilled by my saying what I did that leaves you feeling hopeful and relieved? And that's the third thing we need to see in a giraffe gratitude. She said, I have an 18-year-old son. I've never been able to connect with him. It's been very painful that we never can connect, and I have needed some direction to help me connect with him. Those two things you said met my need for some concrete direction. So, had she expressed her gratitude in giraffe, she would have said, Marshall, when you said these two things, showed me what the two things were. It leaves me feeling hopeful and relieved. It needs a need of mine to connect with my son in a way that I want. Okay? That's how we say gratitude in giraffe. Those three things. And it's also important how we receive gratitude. Let me show you how a, giraffe, a jackal receives gratitude. Jackal, when you offered to give me the ride uh, just now over to where I'm going afterwards, I feel very grateful because I really have a need to spend more time with my family. And if I took the bus, I'd have an hour less time. It's nothing. De rien. If you want to terrorize a jackal, express love or appreciation to it. Really, if you really want to scare a jackal. I've never seen anything scare jackals speaking people more than sincere gratitude or love. Why do you get so nervous, jackal, when you hear it? Well, I, I, I don't know that I deserved it. Uh, see, jackals have this dangerous concept in their head, deserve. It's a very violent concept. See, it implies that you have to deserve appreciation. You have to, you do deserve punishment if you behave in a certain way. See, the concept of deserve is a key ingredient in a violent way of life. 
you believe and deserve, you think certain things are worth things, and you'll set up a very destructive economic system, you'll set up a destructive correctional system. Very dangerous concept. Well, that's not the only reason. Why else do you get so scared when you hear gratitude, Jekyll? What's wrong with being humble? Ah. So you want to have a need for humility? Yes. Well, you know, Jackal, there's different kinds of humility. I'm afraid that your kind is the Jackal humility. I think your kind is the kind that Golda Meir, the Israeli Prime Minister, was reacting to when she said to one of her politicians, don't be so humble, you're not that great. <laughs> but the main reason that I believe that gratitude is so scary for many of us to receive is beautifully and poetically written in The Course in Miracles, where they say it's our light, darkness, that scares us the most. See, having been educated in this jackal way to hate ourselves, to think there's something wrong with us, it's a big jump to really see what I was saying, that we have enormous power to make life wonderful. And there's nothing we enjoy doing more than exercising that power. That's pretty, unfortunately, a pretty big jump for us to come to, but we can come to it. So that's how we say gratitude, observation, feeling in need, same literacy. Make sure it's coming from the heart to celebrate and never to praise, compliment, reward. So any last comments or questions before our time runs?